Hi guys, in today's video I wanted to share some homeopathic remedies for colic and reflux. These two problems can be so stressful and make those first few months really hard on both the baby and the parents to get through. And I wanted to share a homeopathic solution, or a few of them really, that could possibly really, really help and also that carry no risk of side effects like um, conventional medicine or even herbs can and that are extremely safe and safe for baby. If you are new here, welcome! I'm Raquel. This is my channel where I talk about all things health and homeopathy related. Um, if you haven't done it already, be sure and click the subscribe button followed by the alert button so that you get notifications every time I post, which is usually on Tuesdays. If you like the video, be sure and give it a thumbs up below. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos. Tell me down in the comments, I want to hear from you. And if you know anybody who could benefit from the information in this video, share it with them. Help some poor parents out, help those babies get some sleep. As always, the information in this video is not intended as medical advice for your specific situation. If you ever have any doubt about whether a course of action is right for you, be sure and contact the proper health professional. Please remember as I go through these remedies that I can only cover a very few number of remedies in these videos. I'm going to cover the ones that I think are the most common, but there are many, many more. And so if you are having trouble matching a remedy and none of these seems to be working, please contact a homeopath, get some professional help and see, see what homeopathy can do for you. Also. Homeopathy, oh, one of the things I love about it is how safe it is and how um, we can use it even to treat little infants without having to worry about disturbing their virgin gut. Virgin gut is a term that is used to describe a new baby's um, <laughs> digestive system before they are old enough for solids. And the research has shown that it is best not to introduce anything to the infant's gut besides breast milk or formula if necessary before the age of six months. Anything that is given like food or medicine or anything like that can disrupt the virgin gut, can disrupt the development, it can leave the gut leaky, which means that the cell wall is not as tight as it should be and it's allowing larger particles to escape into the bloodstream than would otherwise, which can cause a whole host of problems. But with homeopathic remedies, we can bypass needing to give the infant anything that would disturb the gut. So if a mother is breastfeeding, the mother can actually take the remedy herself and the baby will get it through the milk. Even if the baby is giving, being given pumped milk, the remedy will still go through to the baby. If the baby is formula fed, you can actually just start off with a water dose and put a single drop of that water dose into the baby's bottle of formula, which doesn't make any difference over the, um, the water that you would add to it anyway. So it's a really beautiful way to still be able to preserve that virgin gut. As far as dosing goes, you're gonna follow the same rules that you would for any other situation. You're gonna follow the law of the minimum dose, only giving the remedy when needed. And you can follow the rules of plussing as well, starting with a dry dose if the mother is taking it, otherwise going straight to the wet dose, and then um, putting it in water and bashing it and giving a drop as needed. If you are not familiar with what the law of the minimum dose is, or what I mean when I say plussing, I will be sure and link the appropriate videos down in the description, and I'll see if I can link them at the end as well. Something I wanted to mention before I jump into the remedies is that there is an often overlooked cause of these types of symptoms that a lot of, of pediatricians just don't know about, and so it's missed until the child is older and experienced experiencing other issues and that is the tongue tie it's actually really really common these days and it can really affect not only breastfeeding but it can affect the way that the child is able to digest, to digest their milk because it affects the amount of air that is swallowed and the way that the latch can be and so it affects digestion but it can affect uh, facial growth later which can affect airway development which can affect sleep it really is a 
a um, multifaceted uh, problem that can that really needs to be addressed and resolved in order to see long-standing um, improvements if that is the cause. So I would encourage you if your baby is experiencing these things, if you've tried a few remedies and you're not seeing good results, to have your baby assessed for tongue tie by an IBCLC or a pediatric dentist or ENT that specifically has pursued extra training in ties. Not all of them have. So there are there's a big gap in in the amount of knowledge between those that have pursued that extra education and those who haven't. So I'd encourage you to, to take a look into that as well. Also, it can be really hard to match remedies to babies because they can't tell us much, <laughs> at least not very descriptively, but there is a lot that we can learn by observing, paying attention. Are there any specific triggers? Are there any positions in which they prefer to have their body? Do they prefer to be carried in a certain way um, or with certain rhythms? Do they want to be bounced really fast? Do they just want to be softly rocked? That sort of thing. Um, we can pay attention to times of day that seem to be worse than others. Different things like that. If you really observe carefully, you can pick up a lot that can help point you to a good remedy. Remedy number one is athusia, and this is good for babies who, who vomit large curds of milk that are usually yellow or green, maybe a projectile type vomiting. It may be a covered by, a, uh, by be accompanied, wow, it may be accompanied by a slimy green diarrhea. These tend to be um, very tired babies that are anxious and weepy and, um, and restless. When a baby draws its knees up into its chest in, in its position of comfort, that is a sign for cholesynthesis. These are for sensitive babies who may writhe and scream, especially if you try to move them out of the position that they're in. And they prefer pressure, rather that's lying on their stomach, having their knees pulled in, or having firm pressure by being leaned against something like your shoulder or your palm in that football hold. They may be easily irritated, have gassy diarrhea, and feel better after pooping. Next is diasoria or dioscoria. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'll be sure and write it up here so you guys can find the right remedy. This is great for windy babies who are better, oh, windy babies with rumbly tummies. You can hear them or feel stuff moving around in their stomachs and they are better for arching back. They always want to be in this back arch position. That seems to help relieve things a little bit for them. They are worse for bending doubles, so the opposite of colosynthesis, where they want to re uh, bring their knees up to their chest, diasoria wants to arch backward. They're also worse in the morning and worse for lying down, and they prefer to be held upright. A baby who needs like a podium is going to be gassy and bloated. If the baby is breastfed, they're going to be seem to be particularly irritated by the things mom eats, like beans or broccoli or cabbage, those traditionally gassy foods that shouldn't be affecting them because we know that none of the actual proteins are going from those foods are going into the breast milk because they're being digested in the stomach. But somehow or other, they're still affecting these babies. These babies are so bloated that they don't like feeling the pressure of their diaper or their clothes around their stomach. They tend to be um, fearful, timid babies, and they're better for motion, and they're better for cycling their legs uh, because that helps move things around and, and expel the gas. And they're worse in warm, stuffy rooms, and they seem to do better out in the fresh air. The next remedy is MAGFOS, and that one actually looks a lot like colosynthesis and is a good one to try if it seemed indicated, but it didn't help. These babies also like to draw their knees up into their chest. They're also better for pressure, and they're better for warmth. Those are, so they're probably gonna really like a nice warm rice sock on their belly, or the pressure of your shoulder in their belly, or a, a baby massage, that I love you baby massage. Um, they are probably pretty irritable and they may look bloated and they won't necessarily feel any better after burping or passing gas. 
Next up is Nux Vomica, and these babies are irritable and angry. They also arch their backs. Um, they, their colic is accompanied by constipation often, and this is a kind of constipation where they strain and they strain violently and they're still unable to pass a bowel movement. They also may retch without actually vomiting, though if they do manage to vomit, it's usually a projectile type and they seem to feel a bit better after that. They're worse for cold, better for warmth. They may wake up at 3 a.m. with their colic symptoms and um, they will feel better after a bowel movement when they finally do have it. These babies also may seem to be very sensitive if the mother is breastfeeding to when the mother eats um, spicy foods or drinks alcohol or medications. So that's um, something to, to keep in mind as a trigger. The final remedy option that I wanted to mention technically isn't homeopathy, although it is very much along the same line in certain aspects. And, but I did want to mention that it does have to be given directly to baby, so it can violate that virgin gut. However, because the pills are usually made from lactose, and human milk is the, um, the milk that is the highest in lactose of any mammalian milk, I don't view it as too, too much of an, um, an intrusion into their gut certainly not as much as say an herbal tea or a medication or um, gripe water or anything like that. So personally for me, if, um, if these other things weren't working, this is a remedy that has given relief and been used successfully by a lot of babies and so I really wanted to mention it here and that is the Cell Salt Nat Foss in a 6X and you do need to give it directly to baby. One pellet will suffice. You can crush it between um, two spoons and give it to the baby just in the, in the powder form, maybe moistened on your finger with a little breast milk or, um, or formula. Or you can um, dribble a, bit, a few bits of breast milk or formula into the spoon and have baby kind of lap it up that way. Or you can give it in a bottle dissolved in the bottle. It does dissolve very quickly and easily um, because it's lactose almost instantly. Um, but it can be really helpful and it's a really good one because um, it can help with a wide variety of symptoms that it's very much less specific. So if there aren't any symptoms that are pointing you directly to another remedy, it might be a really good one to try. So that is Nat Foss 6X. I just did a video about cell salts and how they are different from homeopathy. So if you're curious about that, be sure and check that video out. I'll link it in the description and at the end for you. Alrighty, that's all I have for now. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope something in this video really helps you get a good night's sleep if you and your baby are struggling with these things. If you have any experience or information or questions or anything like that regarding these um, success stories or not, lack thereof, with homeopathy and colic, let me know. I want to hear all about them down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.